Okay, we're going to get started with 22-1, the to work together today. Um, go ahead and click in. This is a little bit of a longer unit. Um, we have several steps, partly because we have so many adjusting entries that we need to do. So you're going to see five steps here. Don't panic. Um, we're going to walk through all of them together. So the first thing down here in the question assets is our current end of year information. So you can see um, a few different accounts that are listed here, all ones that we talked about in the lesson. And then we also have our unadjusted trial balance with all of our current balances in those accounts. Um, and then we also have our chart of accounts in case we need to reference that for any reason. And then as we scroll down, you can see that we have a general journal here on page 12 and that we will be doing the adjusting entries. Again, please remember from accounting one that this adjusting entries heading serves as our document number. We do not have any document numbers for these. So when you do a workbook or on your test, you are going to need to write adjusting entries um, on that first line. So the first one that we're going to do is our estimated uncollectible accounts expense. So if we remember um, our amounts, or I should say our account titles for this, um, we are on December 31st, so we'll put like that in here. Um, the two accounts that are used for this adjustment are uncollectible accounts expense, and the credit is going to go to allowance for uncollectible, uncollectible accounts. Okay, so those are our two accounts that are affected. Now we need to figure out what our adjustment amount is. So if we look, um, this is our estimate of what it should be. So that's what we're starting out with. If you remember from this PowerPoint, this is our desired balance right here, is what we want this number. So we've got 3,697. And then we looked at our unadjusted trial balance. And our current balance and allowance for uncollectible accounts is 2232, as shown here. So we need to subtract those two numbers to get the amount of our adjustment. So when we take the uh, 3,697 and we subtract out that 2232, we end up with a balance of 3,675 for our debits and our credits. Okay, and that is our first adjusting entry. Um, our second adjusting entry, if we go back here, is going to be our accrued interest income. So luckily for us, with this one, uh, this amount has already been found for us. This 137.50 is the correct amount. Um, so all we need to remember is the accounts that are affected when we do the adjusting entry for accrued interest. So we have interest receivable, because remember accrued is meaning that we are going to be receiving it. Interest receivable of 137.50. And then our credit goes to interest income. So remember at this point, what this is saying is that we are going to receive this 137.50, although we haven't yet, because this note is likely one that is going to become due in the next fiscal period. So we're just saying that we have these. Again, of course, we're going to, we would need to do a reversing entry on those, but for now, we're just accounting for the adjustment. Okay. Um, our next one is for merchandising inventory. So let's plug our information in first. So when we're doing the merchandising inventory adjustment, um, the two accounts that are used here are merchandise inventory and income summary. Okay, so remember when we're doing this merchandising inventory one, I'm just going to pull up our PowerPoint again. We need to remember or recognize whether the current balance in our merchandise in inventory account is more than the actual inventory that's on hand. So if we go back to our information, it says that our current merchandise inventory is 45,058.15 at the end of the year. Okay. What our unadjusted trial balance says is that our merchandise inventory is 32. So the amount on hand is more. So that's when we would have a income summary uh, being debited and a merchandise inventory being credited. However, ours is flip-flopped. Reverse, reverse. So that means that um, merchandise inventory is less than the actual inventory on hand. 
And so merchandise inventory gets debited and income summary gets credited. So how we figure that amount is by taking our end of year information here, 45,058, and we subtract that from um, the 32,158.15, and we end up with an amount of 12,900. So we'll plug that in right there. Okay, so that's our third adjustment. Let's go back and check our fourth one. Our fourth adjusting entry is for supplies. So we need to take a look. This is going back to chapter six in accounting one. Um, it says that our end, at the end of the year, it says we have 126, um, but according to our unadjusted trial balance, supplies are sitting at 1276. So we need to take 1276.04 and subtract out 126 and that gives us our balance so we go down here the supplies adjustment remember is a debit to supplies expense of 1150 and four cents and a credit to supplies okay we've done that one before that should be relatively familiar and then our Next one is for prepaid insurance, so that's the exact same. This is the balance at the end of the year, so we need to look at what the value of prepaid insurance is, which is 45.3580, and then we're going to subtract out the end of the year balance, so we have an adjustment of 3,000. So we're going to come down here. Again, this adjustment is a debit to insurance expense or 3000 and a credit to prepaid insurance for 3000 okay um, our next one if we scroll up here is our annual depreciation expense this is one of those ones that are given to us as well so we just need to be able to plug in um, what our accounts are that are affected so when we do this, um, our adjusting entry for accumulated depreciation is depreciation expense for equipment. And it's the number that's given to us there. So 2250 and then accumulated depreciation. Depreciation, it's the hardest one to spell, I tell you. Okay, um, our next one is accrued interest expense. So this one again is one that is given to you. The numbers are, so we don't have to do any figuring for that one. So again, this is the same as when we had that accrued interest income. So this is us saying that we uh, owe interest on um, one of our note payables. So this one is gonna be interest expense. And a debit of 277.58, the number given to us there, and then interest payable. So it's saying that we owe this interest, but we haven't actually paid it yet because our note is going to be due in the next fiscal period. And the last adjusting entry that we have is a deferral for prepaid rent income. So this is one that we did in Chapter 21 here, the deferral for unearned rent. So our adjusting entry um, is unearned rent income for $1,000, the amount given to us. And then rent income is the one that gets credited. So what we're saying here is that we have rent that we've received, but we have not actually, um, well, this is the one where we have earned it. Um, it's been a year, maybe it's, we don't know, that doesn't, they don't tell us how long we've been prepaid for, but at the end of the year, we've earned that much. So we debit it out of unearned rent income, remember that's a liability, and then we credit our actual rent income um, account. So I'm going to throw this back up here. Those are our adjusting entries so far. You just have to recognize which ones are the ones that we um, already have the information for and which ones we need to figure. So the uncollectible accounts we need to figure, um, merchandise inventory, supplies, and prepaid insurance are the ones we need to do a little figuring on. Okay, 
Um, so let's check the next step here. I'm wondering if this is, yes. So essentially what we're doing here is we're plugging everything in as if we would be hosting, so to speak. But again, they're doing it in this funky manner with T accounts, which I'm not super thrilled about, but that's what we're going to have to do. Um, notice that they do give you this uh, tab for the description of entry for T accounts. So we have balance, adjusting, closing, and then reversing. We've done that before in chapter 21. So we'll start um, working on this. The rest of it is probably going to be have to be finished in the second video. Um, so to start off with, we have our uncollectible accounts expense. So we're going to, actually, I'm going to unplug that because it's going to be easier. And we're going to scroll down till we find our uncollectible accounts expense. And that's getting a debit on December 30th. Oops. They just want 31. What do we want here? Oh, they don't even want the date. They want ADJ for the adjustment funny these these guys aptly i tell ya okay so adjustant adj because we're doing adjusting entries and then 3675 and then we're going to go up for allowance for uncollectible accounts this is going to be adj and then 3675 so we're essentially just plugging everything in where um they are being debited and credited so we have interest receivable is going to be an adjustment for 137.50 and we scroll down to interest income adj 137.50 go up to merchandise inventory adj for 12,900 Income summary gets the credit on that one, ADJ, 12,900. Supplies expense gets debited, ADJ, 11504. And supplies gets credited, ADJ, 1150 .04. Insurance expense, ADJ, 3000 Prepaid insurance gets the credit, ADJ, 3000 And then we have depreciation expense, oops, wrong way, gets ADJ for 2250 and accumulated depreciation, oops, it's the credit, and interest expense, ADJ, 277.58 on the debit, interest payable, and they are going in order if you haven't quite figured that out yet they are going in chart of accounts order so that should help a little bit trying to find um, where each one is supposed to go unearned rent income gets the debit for a thousand remember that's a liability and then rent income gets the credit adjustment for one thousand so that's all we're doing on step two is just essentially plugging everything into the t account for all of our adjusting entries so we're going to head over and do um, step three next, which is our federal income tax adjustment, um, but that'll be in the next video here coming up.